Okay, today we'll see uh, how the reduction formulas could be used. Uh, the two important formulas are sine, integral of sine n and integral of cos n. So even the formula looks a little messy here. Uh, they look uh, weird and difficult, but it's better to know how it works. But to know these formulas, let's, let's first use uh, one, another formula called uh, integration by parts. So let me go quickly on this. So from the derivatives we know, uh, let's say u and v are two functions, uh, differentiable function where you can find a derivative. So these are the two, and if I want to take the derivative of the product rule u times v, so you remember that? Mm -hmm. What is the derivative of u times v? It's a uh... Keep the first. Switch the second. Derivative of the second. Plus the derivative of u. Okay, so we know this part we already know, right? Yes. So if the derivative of uh, a function is whatever that is, uh, we can take the entire derivative of uh, this one goes back to uv. So what I'm saying is, I'll put a red color to show that this uv is the entire derivative of these two parts. So I'm doing uh, uh, directly, so which is u times v dx plus integral of u times. So if the derivative of this function is that, so you can think of okay, entire derivative of this is go back to u v form. Next, what I do is uh, I'm going to use this as a solve for u dash v. Rebella. Yes. Is the second term also multi or times the derivative or no? Uh, this one? Yes, is that also times the derivative? Yeah. No, no, it's just uh, keep the first, take the derivative of the second, plus the derivative of the first, and keep the second. Okay. Not, but the only thing is, uh, why I say derivative, if I have derivative of this is that one, and how this worked is, just give an example, let's, let's, let's you can take note of here what I'm trying to, if I write derivative of, let's say, x squared plus, let's say, 2x, we know it is 2x plus 2, agree? Is the derivative of x squared is 2x and... Yeah, plus 2. Do you agree, right? And then we can always write this function x squared plus 2x is integral of 2x plus 2. So the entire derivative is, whose derivative is 2x plus 2 is x squared plus 2 a. Yes, Helen? Yes, Helen? Yes, thank you. I do need, I need it with the help of Tommy. He's okay. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh -huh. So, so it's, it's the same thing, x squared plus 2x is, uh, so what I do here is, I take, I can't okay, <laughs> integral of 2x and dx plus integral of, so it's just like distributing the integral sign, right? Mm -hmm. Just distributing. So what I did, I short, do it, I did a shortcut kind of thing. Now, next step is I'm going to I'm going to use this solve for this solve for this integral. I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to subtract this side, and, and you get a formula after that, which is so this is what I'm going to solve. So your main formula, integration by parts, is integral of u times v dx is. Uh, this one, which is u times v, and minus integral of u dash derivative of first and v and dx. So this formula helps. Of course, later class we will see how it works. But right now I wanted to show how we can use it for the reduction formula. So integral of u, then you have to have a derivative of a function that becomes u v minus derivative of the first times v. Make sense? So let's see how to use this in really proving this. The whole aim is to prove why this two, it's a little a long proof, but they may not ask for the, uh, I don't think they'll ask you for placement test at all, but what I'm supposed to know is, can you apply? And it's good to know the joy that you get 
uh, how does how does this formula exist is very important. So let me do quickly on that the first one. Integral of sine of m raised to x dx. I'll call this as because there's a n here power. I call integral of r n. Okay. Now i n means sine of m uh, sine raised to n. If it is three, that is three. If it is four, it is four like that. That's all. That's all it means. Okay. So I want to use this formula. Look at this. I want to have something in the beginning and something second. Okay. So what I do, I split this sine raised to n x is decrease it by one, which is n minus one x, and write another sine x. Do you agree here? Yeah. Can I write like this? Right? Suppose it means what does it mean? If I have five x, you can always write it as. 4x and what else? Time sign. Okay. Now the reason behind to write like this is, I want to give a derivative of a function here. So the question is, this sine x which I have, can I write it as derivative of? Whose derivative is sine x? It's negative. Excuse yes. Me. So we can write this as sine base to the n minus one x, and whose derivative it is? Negative cosine. Yes, minus cosine. See this? What does this sign mean? What does this sign derivative? Derivative, yeah. Now, look at that formula. If you look at that formula, your, this is your u. And what is this? The b. B, is it? So let's see how to apply it quickly. So first part is u times b. Can you help me? How do I write this? So how do I write? Sine of x. What's this? This part? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sine raised to n minus 1 x times what is the v? Negative cos x. Negative cos x. Okay, so I'll just put a parenthesis. So okay, then, then it says minus, what's the next one? The integral of? Minus the integral of one. Oh, now be careful, okay? Because you are going to take the derivative of the first part. Your u is this one. So little scratch work. I'm going to show that if you have u is sine, sine raised to n minus one x. What is the derivative of du by dx? Is look at what is the power here. Okay, so would be negative cosine. Uh, but then remember, this is like you need to write the power first. Okay. N minus one, and then decrease it by one. So it will become n minus 2x, and then the derivative of sine x. So using the chain rule, okay. because it is not just an x, it's, it's sine x. So, so derivative of sine x is cos. So this is like a scratch work uh, we can directly write here straight away. So this becomes, or you can write that n minus 1 is like a number, so I'll write it outside, integral of uh, sine raised to n minus 2 x and cos x, okay? And then look at this, the v here, v stays v. What is v here? v is on negative cos x. Yes. Yes, cos x. So a little messy, right? See, there's a lot of stuff there. And how many causes are, can we, what about this minus and this minus turns to? Plus. Plus, that will change. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, to avoid some steps, I'll just take off that minus sign right here, and write, make this as, agree? Okay. Right sign D? Sure. Okay, so what is cos times cos together? Cos squared. Cos squared. So I can just I'll skip that step and I just cos square x. Can I change cos square to, uh, in terms of sine square? Yeah. So what is cos square can be replaced by? It's going to be, um, excuse me, sine squared minus 1. Okay. Sine squared minus 1 or, or 1 minus, minus sine squared? Square. So what I'm going to do is, just to avoid some lot of steps here, I'll just replace this whole thing by, almost there, okay? So we get dx, uh, sorry, I made a mistake here. It should be 1 minus sine squared of x, okay? and dx. Mm -hmm. Now let's use the distributive property for uh, this sign, which is here, 
sine raised to n minus 2. Let's multiply it to this one, multiply it to this. So let's one write one step here, i n equals, this whole thing I'll write cos of x first, uh, sine raised to n minus 1 x plus uh, this, of course at the same time you have to multiply n minus 1 also. So n minus 1, then this and then 1, so it becomes n minus 1 integral of sine raised to n minus 2 x and then there's a minus sign, so minus, so this will be your dx minus, minus oh, now be careful. This n minus one stays right, but what will be this whole this two together when you multiply? Look at the uh, look at the little x. If I have a raised to n minus five and I have a raised to five, what do you get? You should get n. Agree. So the same thing. So instead of this minus two and this plus two goes away, and what are you left with? A sine raised to n. Okay, so I write dx, and I, I think I forgot the integral sign, right? Because you are distributing the integral for that, this one, and also that one. Okay, so this one is, now this is i n, and this whole thing is what? Also i n, right? Do you agree? Yes. So what I do is I add uh, plus n minus one i n both side to the right and to the left. So when you do that, can I cross this out? So this whole thing crosses out. This, this is uh, n minus one i n. This also is n, but that is minus. So this crosses out. If I just cross this out and I bring it to the left side. And this becomes, look at this, i n, open the parenthesis, plus n times i n minus i n equals minus cos x sine raised to n minus 1 x plus n minus 1. And I'm going to write this as i n minus 2 because it is reduced by 2 now. Look at this i n and i n, this crosses out. Messy, right? Hi. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to, I have to show the proof. You have to know. I mean, you are not going to use the AP testing at all. Nobody is going to ask you this. But the joy, you know, it's good to know why, 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 that like kind of thing. Uh, if you don't get it, check on the video also. Yeah. You just see how I slow down this video and check it out. Okay. So next thing, you just divide by this n here. Okay. So your i n becomes minus cos of x sine raised to n minus 1 x and divide by n and also you divide by n minus 1 here and you get i n minus 2. So that's like you're reducing by 2 the power in the beginning you have n so it gets reduced by 2 and that's how the proof works. You can do the same thing for cos raised to n x also and you can get that whole messy stuff. So, as I said, uh, you would like to know how things work, it's always better to know like this, but if you just want to be like a mechanically robotic, you just, hey, I just want to know the answer, then just do that, uh, those problems uh, on your assignment. Okay. So the rest of, rest of the time, let's do problem number two and problem number three okay. using this trade case. Okay. Thank you.